like we always do about this time. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Pivot TV. Suge Knight is a name that is synonymous with the golden era of hip hop. He's a man who rose to power and influence, but ultimately fell from grace. Today, we delve into the life of Suge Knight, the rise and the fall of Death Row Records, and the chilling hit and run incident that led him to prison. Born on April 19, 1965, in Compton, California, Marion Hugh Suge Knight was a former college football player turned music mogul. In the early 1990s, he co-founded Death Row Records, which became a powerhouse in the hip-hop industry. With artists like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac Shakur under his banner, Death Row was at the forefront of West Coast hip-hop. Knight's aggressive business tactics and connections to gang culture often put him at the center of controversy. He was known for using intimidation to secure contracts and enforce loyalty among his artists. However, his methods also attracted significant legal troubles and rivalries in the industry. As Death Row rose to prominence, so did the legal trouble surrounding Suge Knight. One of the most infamous incidents occurred in September 1996 at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas after a Mike Tyson fight. Knight was caught on camera kicking Orlando Anderson, a member of a rival gang. This altercation escalated tensions between rival factions and ultimately contributed to the shooting and killing of Tupac Shakur, where he died days later. During the incident, Knight faced probation violations due to surveillance footage, which led to his imprisonment for a brief period. In an attempt to mitigate the fallout, Knight allegedly tried to bribe Anderson to testify that he was merely trying to break up the fight. However, the clear evidence from the surveillance video told a different story, showcasing Knight's aggressive involvement. Yes. But when the beating victim, Orlando Anderson, took the stand, he testified Knight tried to stop the beating. Again, we cannot show you Anderson on the stand. I seen him uh, standing right there helping me. He was about the only one. He was helping you, is that correct? Yes. Las Vegas Metro Homicide uh, Detective Brent Becker the later took the stand and testified Anderson had a much different story when he interviewed him in October. He made the comment that Tupac and Knight beat him up pretty good. And he specifically I said... He used and the, the first name Tupac and the last name Knight. Anderson was arrested last month in a sweep of Compton gangsters. As the 90s progressed, Death Row began to crumble, which many believed was linked to ongoing gang rivalries, sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community. With the loss of key talent and increasing legal issues, Knight's empire started to collapse. Knight himself faced various charges, including assault, drug-related offenses, by the early 2000s, Death Row Records filed for bankruptcy and Knight's influence waned significantly. Fast forward to January 29th of 2015, Suge Knight found himself involved in a violent confrontation on the set of Straight Out of Compton, a biopic that was about NWA just days before Ice Cube and Dr. Dre were filming a promotional video for the highly anticipated film. However, Suge Knight was not allowed on the set due to a restraining order that Dr. Dre had against him. And that stemmed from their fallout back in the 90s. Despite his storied past, Knight was turned away by the security as filmmakers wanted to avoid any drama surrounding the production. But the story took a tragic turn when Knight, frustrated and agitated, sought out his friend Terry Carter to help mediate tensions. The incident that unfolded next was anything but peaceful. Terry Carter, a record label owner in Compton, had been trying to facilitate a reconciliation between Knight and Dr. Dre. The meeting took place at Tam's Burgers, a local fast food staple. Around 2.55 p.m., Knight pulled up next to Carter's vehicle and they began to talk through their car windows. However, things quickly escalated when Clee Bone Sloan, an actor and Blood's affiliate, 
confronted Knight. After a verbal altercation, Sloan began punching Knight right through the window of his truck. In a moment of panic, Knight put his truck in reverse, striking Sloan, and then attempted to flee the scene. Tragically, in doing so, he ran over Carter, killing him in the process. One of the witnesses that was on the scene was able to capture some footage. Runs over Bond, right? So when he runs over Bond, Terry's in the driveway in front of his car, and he runs over Terry, smashes his head and everything. So not, he, he's not even breathing. He, they trying to resuscitate him right now. So he like, man, don't look like he's gonna make it. Now, following the hit and run, Knight fled the scene, but he turned himself into the authorities the next day. He faced serious charges, including murder and attempted murder. Now, Suge Knight, a former rap powerhouse, collapsing in court where he's facing a murder charge. The man who built an empire founding Death Row Records now facing life in prison. And ABC's Brandy Hit is on the story. Former rap mogul Marion Suge Knight unconscious in a Los Angeles courtroom, <laughs> collapsing head first onto a chair just moments after his bail was set at $25 million in a murder case. The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department reviewed the video evidence and interviewed the witnesses, which painted a troubling picture of the incident as potentially intentional. Knight's attorney claimed it was an accident, insisting that his client was unaware he had hit anyone. However, the police considered him a a flight risk revoked his bail that was over two million dollars. The uh, record viewers tonight that is present, all counsel present. This matter is a pre trial at day 060. Court has uh, continued the case to March 23rd, 2016, 060. Another understanding is agreeable to the events as 060. That's 060. Yes, is that your you, sir? March 23rd. Yes, sir. I just want to continue for a brief round for all setting at 070 March 20th, 2016. 8.30 a.m. is far from the toilet to appear. Well, that's not a matter I can handle. It is a part of the forward cleared and separate defense counsel. Thank you. Everybody needs to sit down. Including the guys. Sheriff's Department is going to conduct a thorough investigation. Uh, we feel strongly that Mr. Knight did not do anything wrong in this matter. He was attacked by, by a number of individuals. That's already been corroborated by certain witnesses. Uh, he left the scene because he was in fear for his safety and life. And right now, what we're going to do is wait, let the Sheriff's Department conduct their investigation. And I'm confident things are gonna work out for well for Mr. Knight. There are witnesses that indicate that Mr. Knight was being attacked by a number of men, that they were beating him through the car window, that he was making an effort to leave, and tragically, two individuals were run over and one has uh, expired. The person that did expire was a good friend of Mr. Knight's. That's a great tragedy. Mr. Knight has voluntarily come forward. He has surrendered. He's providing his vehicle, his phone, and he will be cooperating in the sense, not cooperating, but working together with everyone in reference to witnesses or things of that nature. I am very confident uh, that the Sheriff's Department will find video, find additional witnesses that will exonerate Mr. Knight, hopefully by Monday or Tuesday. Should Knight face the possibility of a 30-year jail sentence for murder, the circumstances surrounding the incident raised questions about his intentions and the chaotic events leading up to it. While Knight's lawyer argued that it was a defensive maneuver after being attacked, many found it hard to believe. Knight's relationship with Carter was complex. Friends who had risen together in the music industry, Carter had hoped to unite Knight and Dr. Dre, seeing potential for a reconciliation that could benefit them both. Instead, the tragic outcome left Knight facing a murder charge and a long prison sentence. Sugar's in jail right now. Right. When you when you first heard about the situation, right. that that you know, with uh, Terry getting killed yeah, and terrible. Bone Bone getting hit and, and everything yeah, else like terrible. that. Yeah. You, you saw the video. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Did you Remember know Terry? Eyes too, huh? Did you know Terry? Yeah, I know him. Yeah. You guys are friends. I didn't know him like that, but I knew him through like business colleagues okay, and stuff like enough. that. But I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you saw the video and you heard the situation around mm -hmm. what happened and everything else like that, what right. did you really think? 
I mean, on one note, I thought it was, you know, to be honest with you, I thought it was silly, you know, stupid. It's just stupidity. Like, why are you there? You're like, you don't even need to be there. Yeah. Like, why are you there? Because well, I, I interviewed Michelle A, and she said that, you know, because there was stories floating around that he's supposed to meet Suge. I mean, that, that Suge was supposed to meet up with Dre right. to try to, because right. I guess Suge was being, you know, well, not being, but Suge is depicted in the movie. Of course. And he looks the best in the movie too. Yeah, he look really looks like Suge. Yeah, he doesn't look bad in the movie. That's why I don't know what his problem was. Well, look good. I mean, he's not positively <laughs> depicted in the movie. He but. looks good though. He looks like him. He looks like what you know of him. It's not like he started off being a cool guy. When he, oh y'all rock tonight, yeah. To being like, oh I'm managing Doc. To being like, oh man, I don't know what's going on, man. Let me look at your paperwork. Let me get you right. To being like. I'm shooting from death row with the cigar, dogs fighting, shooting yeah. dice. He didn't look, he wasn't in the back room, oh, I fuck, did this and all this and I fucked you over. You know, he he didn't look like that in the movie. You yeah. know what I mean? He he looked, he looked, oh, he looked like him. Well, you know what I wondered about this, and I don't know whether you could answer this question mm -hmm. or not, but you said you and Suge were always cool. Yeah, he was cool. When you see what happened to Suge in that whole situation, uh, how do you feel? you know, accepting a 28 year plea deal? I mean, just for just for that, for anybody, is an unfortunate situation. It, like I would feel like that about anybody that's in that position, especially that was, that was um, you know, once in the position that, that, that he was in, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, he was, he co-owned a, a $300 million company. Mm -hmm. Not too many people get to touch that type of money. Right. Um, did you know Terry? Yeah. Okay. Friend of yours? Uh, I know him. You know him. Yeah. It's a fucked up situation, man. Like, I, I honestly thought that Sugar was going to get off. You know, when you look at that situation, you could say it was self-defense. But, um, yeah, 28-year plea deal. Mm -hmm. It was tough. It's crazy. Um, do you and Dr. Dre still have a relationship? I mean, I, I I don't talk to Dre like on okay. a, on a regular nothing like that. If I see him somewhere, then you know what's up, you know. Well, I I just think it's it's amazing, man, that that someone like a Dre coming, you know, from a gangster rap genre, mm -hmm. turns turns around and becomes rap's first billionaire. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, with the, with the beats deal and and still continues to make music, man. Mm -hmm. it, it's a you know. You guys were all just sort of around, I think, for the golden era mm -hmm. of, of West Coast hip hop, and uh, just had a, just a massive uh, contribution. Throughout his life, Knight has navigated a tumultuous landscape filled with gangland violence and the egos of the entertainment industry. From his Rise With Death Row records to his subsequent legal troubles, Suge Knight remains a legendary yet controversial figure in hip hop history. In a surprising turn of events, Suge Knight has entered the podcasting world while serving his 28-year sentence for manslaughter. His podcast that came out this year, 2024, is titled Collect Call with Suge Knight, and it promises raw and uncut conversations, offering listeners a glimpse into the mind of the infamous hip-hop mogul from behind bars. The podcast is hosted by Dave Mays, the CEO of Breakbeat Media and the founder of the infamous Source Magazine. Mays has known Knight for over 30 years, forming a bond that dates back to the 1995 Hip Hop Awards, which Knight's label sponsored. The podcast features 30-minute episodes that cover Knight's thoughts on current hip hop stories and the events happening outside his prison walls. However, this venture raises significant questions. Should a man serving time for the killing of another person be allowed to profit from a podcast while incarcerated? Especially when it comes to discussing the very nature and people intertwined with his past. Is it morally questionable? Some people see it as an exploitation of his notoriety, turning a tragic history into a source of income. Suge Knight's journey is one of triumph and tragedy. A rise to power with death row records intertwined with a history of violence and legal troubles. From his aggressive business tactics in the 90s to the hit and run incident that claimed the life of his friend Terry Carter, Knight's life has been marked with chaos and controversy.
Now as he hosts a podcast for Behind Bars, questions arise about the ethics of profiting while serving time for manslaughter. His story serves as a cautionary tale of the complexities of fame, power, and consequences of one's actions in the unforgiving world of hip-hop. As we reflect on Suge Knight's life, we are reminded of the allure of power and tragic consequences that can arise from a life lived on the edge. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of Suge Knight's journey from hip-hop mogul to prisoner. This is Pivot TV. My name is Jeff Moreland. Who should we do next? Who should we talk about next? Leave it in the comments. Let me know if you guys like this. If you want more videos like this, leave that in the comments. If you like this, hit the like and subscribe button. There is a link for the new Suge Knight podcast, Collect Call with Suge Knight, in the description. Go over there and check it out. It's not bad. Guys, I'm going to get up out of here. In the meantime, check out this video right here. There's some crazy stuff in it. You're not going to want to miss it. As always, guys, I love you. Peace. <music>